So far, we've been working with the console window in the browser. And when we work with this console window in the browser, we can run very simple statements and commands. But the thing is, when we refresh the page, we unfortunately lose all that data. And even in the next lecture, what I'm gonna be doing is actually I'm gonna be writing out functions and so forth. So there's gonna be lots of code here that we need to write out. And I'd also like to keep this code. So even if the page refreshed, I have my code stored in a more persistent, meaning a more dedicated space such as a JavaScript file or a .js file. This way my code can be stored and then it can be loaded in to different web pages and it will stay in the web page even if I refresh the browser. Now what we have here is called a code editor or IDE, which stands for Integrated Development Environment. It's simply a code editor that allows us and facilitates us in creating our scripts. There are many code editors that are completely free. This one that I'm currently using is called Brackets. And if you go to brackets.io, you can download this IDE for free. Also, please note this lecture does come with the source files. So you can go ahead and download the source files for the current project which is the index.html file. This is the HTML file that is displayed inside of the browser that you're currently viewing. And then you also have the myapp.js file. Now the .js symbolizes a JavaScript file. This is where all of our JavaScript code will go. And the HTML is for our HTML markup. And so currently this is what myapp.js file looks like. Now ignore all of this code because we're gonna get back to it later. But let's take a look at the index file. You have the basic markup that you need to create a simple HTML page. And what we have right here is the script tags. Now when you use the script tags, what you're doing is you are linking to the JavaScript. So we are linking to the myapp.js file. So we're targeting this file and we're saying include all of the code and we want to execute the code that's in this file within our index.html page. We're just creating a nice link there between the files. Now, please do note, you can write JavaScript in line. So for example, I can write script and you can write JavaScript directly in HTML. So anything in between these script tags will be classed as JavaScript. Now let's say that when I load my page, I want to display the string hello world in the console and I want to do that via this script here. How do I do it? Well, first of all, we need to target the console window. So you say console and then what you need to do is tell it to log something out. So we do console.log and this is great for debugging. If you ever want to check a variable or you want to check something in your scripts, it's always recommended to log something out to the console. When you log something, it's like a ledger. For example, you have maybe a book with all of your accounts in it, a ledger, and you log each transaction out. So that's exactly what we're doing. We're logging some information, some data out to our console window. Now don't forget the console window is text-based only, so you can't, let's say, display an image or something like that in the console, but what you can do is display the text and so forth. So I can say console.log, and then we are invoking this function with the parentheses. Now I'll talk more about invoking functions later on, but we say console.log, and then we pass in the data. So I'm gonna pass in hello world, and that's it. So we save this now, and when I hit refresh, you'll notice it says hello world in the console window. So we can actually communicate from the JavaScript to the console window and you can write JavaScript directly in a HTML page. You don't need to actually have a separate JavaScript file. But the reason why I want a separate JavaScript file is because I want to keep the logic, this side of things, all the application logic, you know, the calculations and the computations away from the markup. I just want the markup to be the display and I want my application logic separate. 
So now I can write some really advanced scripts and I can keep it away from my markup code. This makes it easier for me to focus on my application logic, the computation, the mathematics, all the rest of it, and focus on my markup. And it, this separates the concerns. This is always what you want to do in programming is separate the concerns. You want to keep things away from something else. So if something's for presentation, for visuals, keep that in one file. And if something's for computation and logic, you keep it in a separate file and that actually will help you out. Now also, why have I included the script right at the bottom of the body and why do I recommend it? Because let's say my JavaScript file here is let's say two or 300 kilobytes, which is fairly large. And so that's quite a large JavaScript file and your JavaScript files can get very large. So the reason why we don't include it in the top is because HTML is block loading. So in other words, it starts loading line upon line, precept upon precept. So it goes to the head, then it goes to meta, title, script. And what it will have to do is if your script is really large, it's going to actually hold up the rendering because the body, the body of the page is the bit that you can see in the browser. Now let's say my file is two or 300 kilobytes. Well, it's block loading. So it's waiting there, it's sitting there and it's trying to download all of the JavaScript and then it carries on when it's finished and then we get on to the bit that's rendering. Whereas if I had my large JavaScript file at the bottom, we start block loading line upon line, precept upon precept. And of course, when we start rendering things out, for example, our header elements and all of our styling and all of our page, all of the rendering, all the visuals come through first, which makes our page look a lot faster. And then we load in our large JavaScript file or files into our HTML page. It just actually makes it better for rendering as well. So that's a quick tip. And so I'm going to go ahead and save these out. So now I've moved my console.log into the myapp.js file. This file is now being linked inside of the index.html file. And then finally, when I hit refresh, we get the exact same result. So let's take a quick look at the console.log and see what we can log out where you can log out a string. You could log out a number. You could also log out true and false, which is a Boolean. You can even log out primitive types like null and undefined like so. So I can go ahead and save that and hit refresh. And what's really nice about this is the fact that I can get the output and it can tell me what's going off inside of my script. Sometimes when you're writing your scripts, don't forget, it's not executing. So you're only looking at what you've written and it makes sense to you. But when you run it in the browser, bad things can happen, things that you weren't expecting. And so what's really nice is to log the data out as you go along to figure out what's happening to the data. Is this function returning the right data? is this variable containing the right information. You can log out variable data as well. So var num equals 10. And then I can log this out to the console. So I can say console.log and then I can log out the num variable and we can go and save that and hit refresh. And there is the num variable. So it looked at that symbol that reference in memory and it pulled out the value. Then on top of that with the console.log you can do all of these things in one go. So you can log out a string. You can also have a standard integer or a floating point number. You can also have a Boolean such as true or false. And then also you can have null and undefined. And also I can log out, let's say variables and outputs from functions as well, which we'll talk about later on. So there we go. You just separate each value out with a comma and then go ahead and save it and hit refresh and you'll notice that one line has logged out all of those different values so you can log out multiple values you can log out multiple variable values and so forth so go ahead and have an experiment with console.log and that will help you later on in understanding the output that is provided